Hey everybody, Adam Steele from Hot Pulse Studios here, and today uh, I'm following on from a couple of videos I just did talking about um, recording separate audio and the new cameras that I got, which were the Blackmagic Pocket 4K cameras. So I'm going to talk about a way that I've started using now to synchronize multiple cameras uh, and sound uh, using the DAW. I'm using Reaper, but you can use Cubase, you can use pretty much most of the main DAWs to do this. Uh, and if you've got an audio interface with more than two outputs and the cameras and a couple of cheap cables that I got off eBay, you can synchronize all your cameras using a thing called timecode. And I'm going to show you how. Now, timecode isn't new. It's been around for a long time, but up until very recently, it was pretty much just the domain of professional video guys with the big, scary shoulder mount professional cameras, uh, which would use timecode to synchronize all the cameras using BNC connectors, those big things that look like kind of they go on the back of a TV, or if you're an audio guy, you'll have seen word clock and that kind of thing, uh, using the same kind of connectors. Um, there are a lot of cameras now, uh, the smaller, more prosumer, I guess, kind of cameras that can now support using timecode to be synchronized. And this is a really useful way of keeping everything in sync so that when I drop things into, well, I use Premiere, but pretty much any editing software, there are ways that you can hit synchronize by timecode, go and everything then just magically lines up everything is within a frame of synchronization, which in video, I mean, a frame to frame, everything's in sync. And that can make life super easy. I know a lot of uh, video editing programs now can synchronize uh, cameras and external audio devices by using onboard microphones and using the sound as kind of a cue, but that doesn't work in every situation. What if you've got a second camera that's kind of like in the next room that you want synced up for example, or if it's a really noisy situation with a crowd, like a show, so that there's so much extra noise going on that synchronizing everything is impossible just by using the sound. Or even, what if uh, you've got cameras in a really big venue that are many, many, many meters, feet apart? Uh, what can happen is if you've got one camera that's really close and one camera that's far away, with the speed of light, um, you see the mouth moving at the same time, but with the speed of sound, it might be that the voice is actually several frames out on the audio of that rear camera. So then syncing it, you've got to then do it either manually, which can take a lot of time, uh, especially if you've got several shots to do over and over and over and over, or it can just be out and you've got to nudge it by a few frames and then you can't trust all your sync stuff. Pain. What a pain. So time code is a method that we can use to bring everything into line. Time code is, in this case, uh, using the LTC protocol. Um, it's an audio signal, essentially, that kind of shouts a load of numbers. Depending on what frame rate you're running your cameras in, you define that everywhere. And if there's one master output that is basically shouting like when you see a rowing boat and you've got a guy with a megaphone shouting stroke, 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 and everybody's moving in time, it's that. But also it puts out a very specific time code based on what you're recording. So you can predefine what hour it is for what reel of the film. You can record the same section over and over and the time code will stack up every time. So if you're doing a music video is a really good example. Um, if you play back the track from something like a laptop with an audio interface with at least three outputs, one and two can be the track and three can be the time code. So then every take that you do will perfectly line up without you having to spend hours in post. So now I'm going to talk you through on the streaming computer, because it's a nice way of doing it, exactly how uh, I would jam timecode using a few cables that I got off eBay. All right, so we're going to need three things, really. Uh, in this specific example, we're using a Blackmagic Pocket 4K. Uh, I'm using Reaper and we're using the uh, Behringer interface that I've got down here, the UMC 404 HD. Uh, you can do this with pretty much any software 
that supports this, like Cubase supports it, and there are others. You can do this with any interface that's got more than two outputs and with any camera that supports timecode. You might need some adapters to get the right connection to plug it in, but this should be simple. Now, this is Reaper. The first thing I'm going to do is go to my file and project settings, and under video, make sure that the frame rate of this project is the same as the cameras. In my case, that's 25 because I'm British and that's the way that we tend to run things. It works well with our electric system, 50 hertz and all that kind of stuff. If you're in America, it's either going to be 29.97, uh, which is 30 frame drop, so to speak, or it's going to be uh, 23.976 or 24, depending on how you've got it set. Check your cameras and make sure you can... <laughs> Make sure all your cameras are running the same frame rate and that this is set the same. Now, in this project in Reaper, I could add microphone inputs and have everything ready so I can set multiple mics, that kind of thing. That's not the focus of this video, but let's say we're doing that. Uh, aside from that, we need another channel. And on this, we're going to go to insert uh, Sympty LTC MTC timecode generator. And that's dropped a little block in here, which I'm going to make bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So that's now several hours long. So that plays the whole time. There's a few things that I'll need to do to adjust this. First of all, that, if I hit play, is going to come out of the speakers. And it's going to sound horrible. We don't want that at all. So we go into the I.O., the ins and outs on this track. And where it says master send, we untick that. And what I'm going to do is go and add a, a hardware output out of output three. Just because one and two are the speakers, so the next one along is three. If you're using an audio interface that's got one of those kind of mixer style systems, you might need to set it to be a straight through or just make sure that's not coming through your speakers and only going out the correct output. And the last thing to do is right click on our time code generator thing that we made and go to the source properties. So in our case, we're not sending MIDI. We are sending audio, which is LTC. Make sure the frame rate is correct. Otherwise, this is not going to sync up on your cameras. Now, I can change the start time here. So if I've got several reels of film, I can change that to be two, three, four, six hours, whatever you want it to be, and then just hit OK. And because that's coming out of output three, when I hit play, we will see an audio uh, thing here that is absolutely blasting out and that is the timecode being sent out of output three of our interface from here it's relatively simple all we need is some cables to get our timecode from that channel on the interface out to the camera uh, in this case the cameras take the timecode on the microphone input which is a three and a half mil jack so i'm going to use one of these adapters that's a big 6.35 mil jack to mini jack on the back of my interface plug that into output three accidentally unplug the uh, usb there which you shouldn't do but it's fine and then i just get one of these cables which is a this one's a five meter long cable it doesn't really matter about the quality too much of the cable as long as it's in one piece and good condition and then I plug that other end straight in to the microphone input on the camera. Now I'll do a little B-roll shot of this, but if I tap at the top of the camera screen where it says 000, uh, we see there's actually kind of the clock running. And that is, uh, if you run the camera without time code, it puts the current time in as the time code which is fine, but if the time isn't absolutely down to the frame, that's why we're using this external timecode thing. Now back on uh, Reaper here, if I hit play, this should change. A couple of things should happen. Bingo. So on our screen, that's changed. So the timecode has the EXT symbol, so external timecode, and is now counting up from just a few seconds because I hit play right near the start of this project. But if I move where I am in the Reaper project, that will change where the time code is. That's it.
Simple. So now whenever I hit record in Reaper to record the audio for this kind of thing, uh, then that will also send the same time signal out to the camera. And the way that I'm doing this uh, on multiple cameras is I've got a little audio splitter, three and a half mil splitter. So at the end of the cable, it connects both to this camera and to a splitter. And then I've got another cable that just goes out to the next camera and the next camera and the next next camera. And because it's a digital signal, I'm not too worried about audio degradation down the line. If it's slightly less loud, I mean, the, the time code will still pick it up. And I've just hit stop in Reaper and the time code has gone from external to internal. That's free running now, free wheeling. So that if for some reason the audio recorder stops, but the cameras carry on, they will carry on... Uh, as they were, as you last gave them ins instructions. And hopefully that gets them close enough that <laughs> you can finish the edit. I know that's happened on big film sets before where uh, a connection has been broken, but the freewheeling in the cameras has kind of saved the day. Uh, so you just make sure if you can, the time code is then re-jammed and re-synced before the next part of the shoot. But yeah, there you go. Nice and simple, and that should keep all the cameras locked in now over to my home setup where i use premiere and you'll be able to see me uh using this in action all right so i've got the footage that i filmed back to my editing space and i've got premiere open you can do this in resolve final cut pro whatever it is uh, but i'm going to show you the premiere way because that's what i use so I've got myself uh, a sequence ready to put my uh, video and audio in and I've got this 18-minute uh, section that I did about this audio uh, box here that I'm releasing in a different video. So I'm going to drop this in on video and audio too because I know that I have the wide angle that I want it to be. Where is it? That one. I wanted that one to be on camera one. So they're now in. If I hit play on those, they might be synced, they might not. So let's just make them purposefully out of time. And we'll be able to hear very quietly the voice on them. And again, in this case, even though the audio is quiet, we do have an audio source that we can use to synchronize. But we're doing this with the assumption that either we have no audio, bad audio that doesn't have a sync or any of any any possibility uh, this will work pretty much all the time and I have an audio file uh, recorded in Reaper which was the thing that generated the time code so I'm going to drop that in here as well now I just drag select them all <clears throat> right click and go to synchronize which is in this big menu and I've can, I can use the audio, which may work, but instead if I pick time code, that suggests to me a time that is embedded in them all. I hit OK, and with no wait time, there we go. And to prove this works, we go to the main camera. Let's mute the audio on the cameras, because we don't need that anymore. And listen, does it work? We can see those meters moving on that piece of audio gear there perfectly in time. So we know that by time code sync, that didn't have to analyze the files, that didn't have to spend any time working out, it just worked. And I'm gonna go one further. I'm going to use a completely different project here, which is something that I recorded today, which is a guitar performance thing from my friend John Brown from Monuments uh, for his website Riffhard. And this is something with four cameras. Now this is the intro riff. So let's have a look here, which one that was. Some of these need LUT files. So that's camera two. Uh, let's find camera one. I'll just cut back here in a second when I've put all the cameras on the timeline here with their audio. But even without the audio, this would still work. There we go. So I have four cameras and two audio selections here, and they were all done with time code. So let's right click this and go to synchronize time code. It's suggesting 11 minutes 35 is a good example. I hit OK, and there we go. 
So we've got guitar performance. And we've got some voice. And we can see that that's perfectly in time. If I open up any of the other guitar uh, videos, this, this needs grading, but as raw footage, we can see that's in time. This one's in time too. I can see his hands moving there. And last but not least, They're all perfectly in time with each other, and that took no processing time at all. It's a bit of an old school way of doing it, but it is foolproof. Once you've connected your cameras together and run time code between them all, you're not doing it manually, and you're not doing it by guessing with audio if the audio even syncs, because sometimes it doesn't. In my career, I found many times when the audio just goes, nope, won't sync for you. Tough. So yeah, if you can jam time code, probably a good thing to do back to me so there you go i did it here with one camera and the audio but you can do it with as many cameras as you have you can do it with multiple takes and stack them up in your editing software that can save you tons of time and i hope this has been useful for you the the cables that i used were just i the, the main one is a 10 meter three and a half mil cable with an adapter on the end uh, and then I've got these little splitters as well, uh, which go into the uh, microphone jack on one of the Blackmagic pockets and then just uh, split the sound, the sound, the timecode signal, to uh, another source so that can just be repeated and repeated and repeated. Um, I know that a lot of uh, big professional camera setups do exactly this. They just use, um, what do you call it? They just use BNC connectors, which lock are bigger, more robust. And so for a professional application, that is kind of the way you would go with it. And there are other options as well. Like there's the tentacle sync type uh, system where it's all wireless and does exactly this, but without the cables. That's where I got the inspiration for doing this, actually. The, um, I, I had a Panasonic GH5S until recently, and apparently with uh, an adapter, there's a, an input that's usually for the flash trigger, but you can put input through there, through an adapter to the tentacle sync, there's just a 3.5mm jack. So it is, it's technically an audio signal, but it gets read as a digital thing. On these Blackmagic cameras that I'm using as well, uh, because there are other uh, sound inputs, um, it doesn't take over where the audio would be it also does have onboard camera audio or even the uh, xlr out with proper microphone input which i'm not using right now because i'm using that but options options are good and that means that i've now got a really flexible system there's a shoot i'll be doing next week where i'm gonna have four of these black magic cameras in the same room and just hooking them all up together like this uh, means that i'm gonna have a much easier time in the edit and so is everybody else Thanks everybody for watching. Hope you found this useful and, uh, you know, like, share, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. Join the Discord, which the link is in the description below if you want to ask us questions. Uh, support us on Patreon if you want to see more of this kind of stuff. And thanks everybody. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.